It's the Practical Medicine Podcast, and we are Dr. Rob Balco and... Oh, what is that? Hey, Rob, Rob. <laughs> if you could mute that, oh, doctor. <laughs> I'm wondering why I was... No, it's going to keep going. All right. Dr. Stephanie Lipnicki. All right. <laughs> minor technical difficulties while we go remote for Dr. Stephanie. Yes. But first, let's talk about the mission of this podcast. It's our goal to bring awareness about the many different ways to maintain health and heal your body, mind, and spirit. From acupuncture to Zen living and everything in between. Dr. Stephanie? So I'm remote because Andrew tested positive for COVID. Um, he found out after he left for Tennessee, which is why I don't have to quarantine at home. I, I did get tested and I tested negative, but I'm quarantining for the 10 days. So I am remote at my office all by myself. No one is here. It's so lonely. Um, Andrew also does a podcast with a shared universe. His is uh, You Stole My Song. They're a bunch of DJs. So, um, yeah, he's not even recovering at home with me. He's down there managing the symptoms. So that's why I'm here. And we just want to thank everybody for watching and listening. And for this episode, we're covering the winter solstice as it is approaching in just a week. And our focus here is to provide you with information, tips and tricks to make the most out of the winter months. I wanted to share a poem um, that gives me the giggles every time it's the winter solstice. Uh, it was on a show called Little Bear that my cousin's son would watch and I would babysit him. And it was uh, Maurice Sendak uh, show. And Maurice Sendak is the one who is really famous for writing where the wild things are, but this show was super, super cute. And they had this winter solstice episode and I just loved this poem. And the poem is, whether the weather be fine or whether the weather be not, whether the weather be cold or whether the weather be hot, we'll weather the weather, whatever the weather, whether we like it or not. And he didn't write the poem when I did the research to add it here. It's actually an anonymous poem, but I just love that poem. And it just reminds me of the winter solstice all the time. And like the poem in New Jersey, we experience a change of seasons. Um, so we need to learn how to weather the weather, whatever the weather here in New Jersey. And that's why you know, when Dr. Rob and I were planning things, I said each season, I'd like to, you know, do something about the seasons and remind people of how to stay healthy, how to make the winter more tolerable, what you can do, you know, in terms of dressing and eating and that kind of stuff. And we see that very often in, the, in our clinics where uh, people are transitioning over to, say, the cooler months or the warmer months, and acupuncture helps with that. So that's why... Another reason why it's a, a big part of what we right. go out and share with people. Yeah. And and I tell, you know, people that they have to think of things like if you're going to the gym, yes, you're getting hot and sweaty, but still make sure you wear your jacket when you're, you know, leaving. Don't think, oh, I'm so sweaty and the cool air is going to feel great. We talk about um, that when you're sweating, the pores open up and that that's how you tend to get sick, that that's how it opens you up to pathogenic factors. And then the pores shut closed with the cold. And then that's how you get sick because they're lingering inside. Another thing I like to discuss with patients is if you remember last January or February, when it was really uh, nice out for a few days, you walk outside with a t-shirt or a, a sweatshirt and you think, oh, this is great. And it's only maybe 35 or 40 degrees. But in October, when it drops down to say, 55 degrees, you're shivering and cold. Is your body actually shifts and changes to get ready for that uh, seasonal shift? And that's right. really what we're going to talk about today is, you know, what you can do to help make that an easier transition for your body and you don't get sick. 
Right. Also, I think what happens too is when you have those warm days, people are like, oh, I don't need my jacket because it's 70 degrees at one o'clock on this one fluke kind of a day. And then four o'clock hits and the sun goes down and then they're freezing cold because they don't have their jacket with them. So it's things like that that I, you know, I also feel like I want people to be mindful of and say, sure, you can maybe take that jacket off, but make sure it's still with you at four o'clock so you can put it back on and stay warm. So that's, I think that's what we should start with, ways to stay warm. So clearly appropriate clothing. You know, you shouldn't be wearing shorts when it's 19 degrees out. Um, having extra layers with you. Um, I personally love my mittens. I get made fun of for my mittens, but I, I prefer mittens to um, gloves. So mittens, gloves, hats and scarves. Um, remember we talked about in the autumn podcast about um, protecting the point in the back, the two points in the back of the neck, the wind gate that, you know, your parents were always right when they said wear a scarf, that how important that is. Um, you know, warm coats and you, you need your hats. Ears today, too. Yeah. And you don't have your ears today. Too. No, I don't have my ears. You know why they don't have a microphone on them. Uh, so I had to steal. We have like, we're so sad in our house. We have one set of <laughs> earbuds and my daughter was like, the microphone doesn't work. And I'm like, give me those earbuds. I need them to go live. So yeah, I don't have my ears. It's so sad. Um, so I, I wanted to share my coat story. So I, when I get a winter coat, I want it to be long enough that it covers my butt. I need my butt to be warm. I just, I don't like short coats. I feel like then you get in the car and the seat is ice cold. And I know most cars have like seat warmers. However, mine has decided that the display does not work any longer. And that's how you turn the seat warmer on. So there is no warming of the buttocks in my car right now. It's it's so terrible. Um, but anyway, I was looking for warm coats. And why do all the long coats look like they're made like from Michelin tires? <laughs> what is that about? I don't want a coat that looks like I'm wearing the Michelin man suit. I want it long. I want it warm. So I'm guilty of wearing like a sweater out all the time and just running from the car to wherever I have to go. So I'm, I'm kind of my own worst example. And then I wanted to share, a, I, I use these microwavables. Um, and so I had given one of these and I didn't realize that Rihanna's dance teacher had the same one. I gave it to her years ago because she had come to the studio and she had burns. She um, fell asleep with the heating pad on, which I know a lot of people put the heating pad on to fall asleep. So I have these, this is my microwavable sheep. I'm trying to get his face in the camera. Um, so you put these in the microwave for like a minute and 30 seconds. And then I put it like in the bed with me when I'm going to bed so that it warms my feet up, but then it's not on all night long. And I don't have to worry about, um, getting burns on my skin because I've fallen asleep and you're not as sensitive to it. Um, I always tell people keep an extra blanket where you're reading your books or watching TV so that you can throw that on. If you get chilly, those kind of things. Very good. And to always wear something on your feet. Yes. So. so important. I'm so guilty of trying to milk the time that you can wear flip-flops. <laughs> and I realized this this year I was I was not about trying to extend that time. I switched over to my and I have a sock drawer that let me tell you, I it's clearly an addiction with all these different socks that I have. So the minute it gets cold, I should be wanting to just switch over to those socks. So yeah, definitely socks on in the house, um, slippers. I may don't wear your shoes in the house person. Are you? Yes. Like it, shoes inside the house that have gone outside the house really gross me out. Mm -hmm. So like if you want to wear shoes inside your house, they should be inside shoes, not outside shoes. Because it just tracks too much disgustingness in. That's a whole nother topic that we could get into. <laughs> <laughs> um. And then, then I guess, you know, aside from ways to stay warm that way, foods, what you put in your diet can help you stay warm. Um, so I like spices that are more warming. 
in the winter time, cinnamon, ginger, clove, chives, onion, um, chai tea is a nice blend of those different warming spices, um, adding them to, you know, different foods. You could add them to mm -hmm. so many different foods. It doesn't have to be that it's just teas that you're drinking. It's, you know, think of ways you can incorporate them into recipes. Maybe you make roasted sweet potatoes and you throw a little bit of cinnamon and ginger in with it before you throw them in the oven, that kind of thing. It's great that you see them show up in a lot of traditional foods. Right? Yes. And, and foods during the holidays, the colder weather. Cinnamon, cardamom is another nice variation. Yes. Cinnamon that uh, is very warming in the body, brings in more energy. Yeah. And I think that we talked about this in the autumn podcast, but kanji is such a great way to stay warm. And you had mentioned doing more of like a breakfast sweeter dessert type. Whereas I've stuck to the traditional, like, I'm going to do like a chicken soup type and adding those sort of things. So I'm so excited now to start doing the way that you do. So you, what are some of the things that you put in like the sweeter kanji? It's a nice uh, break from the traditional chicken based uh, savory kanji, right? So it's going to have maple syrup in it, maybe or honey, uh, brown sugar. You know, more on the sweeter side, not too much, right. but just enough to make it a nice variation. Uh, sometimes maybe a little blueberries or raisins would be nice in it. Um, Similar you know. to what you would do with like an oatmeal, which is another stick mm -hmm. to your ribs. Great yep. thing to have in the winter time because it's warm. Yep. And I actually added so that if people wanted to look at the big, because that would be like a whole explanation in and of itself, how to make the kanji and the ratio of the rice and the type of rice. I added that on my blog and I can link that underneath. Um, just a basic, like, here's what you want to do. Here are some ideas for recipes and things that you can add to it. Um, just so people have that. Cause I would love for, for the people who are watching and listening to, to try some of these recipes at some point. Um, oh, and with the oatmeal, another nice thing is that if you get the, the rolled oats, you can do that in the crock pot overnight so that it's ready in the morning. And it's even, I feel like it's more creamy than normal when you do it that way. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, not that you can't get it that way on the stovetop, but nope. it's just nice to wake up to that and not have to make anything. It is nice. You can smell it in the morning too. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Kanji's waiting for me. Yes. <laughs> so what are some other ones? Uh, so you were talking about meats, adding more meats in in the winter. Yes. That's a good one. Some, some rich uh, stews like lamb or, or beef stew. Uh, and again, the crock pot is a great thing for that. Or really just letting it simmer on the stove and yeah. letting the flavors all meld together uh, on a on an after Sunday afternoon do some cooking and then put it away for the week. It's a great way to um, spend your Sunday resting, relaxing. While it cooks for you. It cooks for you and uh, having, and then having meal and then having it for the week. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like another one that I like is chili. I feel like that's another stick to your ribs. It's warm and you put some of those warming, you know, peppers in it and it just heats you up when it's cold. Um, and then, you know, in terms of veggies, trying not to have too many cold veggies at this time of year, like those root vegetables that bring warmth to the core, like turnips, pumpkins, rutabagas, cauliflower, beets, broccoli, um, and even putting those and making that in a soup so that again, you're not having like an ice cold salad when it's 20 degrees outside and making your entire body work harder to stay warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all those foods are inherently cooling, so cooking them helps take that edge off of that coolness that you're bringing into the body. And they're a little, maybe a little harder to digest, so the cooking actually helps digest them for you. And you add the spices to them, and you can have a, a pumpkin soup, a carrot soup, cauliflower soup, and um, and it's just delicious to to cook that up and enjoy it on a nice. Yeah. And you were saying that with like Thanksgiving having just passed that you had done some bone broth, which is another really great way to stay warm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I took the all of the turkey bones, and what I did was I cooked it with carrots and onions, and um, it was it carrots and onion and celery, and I just took all of that and put it in a stock pot and cooked it for about four hours or so, and uh, strained off all the solid stuff and have this incredible thick. Uh, bone broth that could be made into a, a base for a soup or you could just drink it as a bone broth if you're not feeling well or yeah. just drink it every day as part of your nutritional supplement. Bone broth is good for so many things. I feel like we're going to bring that up for a lot of different things. And I feel as though when I was in school and we started talking about making that and how healing it is to have bone broth, um, it just you didn't see it as much. People hadn't heard of it. You had to teach them how to make it. If you really want to cheat, you can go to a lot of stores and find it in the frozen food section and just take it home with you that way if you don't. I mean, I always think that when you make things for yourself, I always tell my kids that what I make tastes so much better because I put love into it. And I feel like when you put love into your cooking, that you're, it's almost like you're eating that love and it's so much healthier for you. So I always told them that. So, um, and I did have someone, and I might've said this when we had the autumn one that years ago, I was like, you should, you know, make bone broth and it'll be really, you know, she was very, very deficient in terms of her digestion. It was lacking and I wanted her to heal the gut. And she was like, can I just get beef stock like beef broth. She said beef broth. And I was like, no, hmm. no, not the same thing at all. But now they do actually have bone broths that you can get from the store. So, but it was, it was an interesting, so yeah, it's not, not so many raw. And I know a lot of people for the holidays will put that like veggie platter out <laughs> have a couple pieces. We're not telling you don't have any of it, but I feel like stick to the warmer cooked foods. It's so much, so much better. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the bone broth, um, you can, it, it, depending on the store, the food store you go to, you can get bones and just make your own. It's yeah. Not, it may be, it may or may not be available depending on the store that, uh, yeah, I know usually like, even if I'm not thinking of making bone broth, when it gets to be this time of year, if I see the bones, like I generally shop at ShopRite and Wegmans, I will get them and freeze them because you can't, like some days I'll show up and want to make it and I can't find it. So mm -hmm. I definitely think if you see them and I just get the, that's another recipe that we should probably, I'll add it to my blog so that people could see one of the ways that you can make a, a really good bone broth and you roast the bones and the veggies in the oven first and then you just cook it like for 20, I think it's 24 hours. I haven't done it since last year, but you cook it for a long time and it's just so nourishing and so good for you. Mm -hmm. And then of course, drinking beverages that are warmer in, warmer in temperature and warmer in, in nature, I think are so much better for you. Like mm -hmm. I consider mint to be more cooling, but if you have mint that's in a tea where there's say, cinnamon and other things that are warming, it's not its not necessarily as big a concern as if you're like, I'm just gonna go around drinking cooling mint tea all winter long. <laughs> and you were saying something to me about some new tea that you had? Yeah, I had this tea in um, Thailand. And it's really super simple to make. And what it is, is it's black sesame seeds. So you can order black sesame seeds online. I haven't really found a place on here to get them. And is, wait a minute. Let me stop you for a second. Is it specific black sesame seeds? Because I use black sesame seeds in cooking sometime. Hmm. I think it's the same one. Oh, yeah. okay. I All right. One, and it came out exactly the way I had it. So I, I think I'm on the right track. So what, what you do is you just blend the sesame seeds and then heat them up to a temperature that you like. And it turns out to be uh, like a like a blue purplish color, and it's delicious. So, I'm gonna have to try that. that sort know? of like, have you ever done mixed black rice and white rice? No. Oh, it comes out the most beautiful, beautiful shade of purple. That sounds great. I love it. 
Um, and we were also talking about making sure not to drink your calories, mm -hmm. like the smoothie thing. A lot of people will do these smoothies and then still eat a meal. So you're drinking part of your calories um, and that changes the digestion. A lot of digestion takes place in the mouth and I think people forget this. So when you're taking in a smoothie and it not moving it around your mouth, we were talking about that you lose all of the digestive enzymes that are that start in your mouth and that okay. you're missing out on those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're missing the entire process. And you're condensing down the calories into an easily absorbable form, but, but you're skipping the digestive step, right? Right. Yeah. So that's really not the best way to consume calories. Because now we no. now we have, they're all available so quickly they need to they want it being stored as fat. Right. right. So, and I ask, I also tell my patients to like exclude or limit cold and icy drinks. Um, I just feel like you're trying to stay warm. Why would you, you know, then drink? Like, I, and I've had patients who have come in and said this to me, I'm freezing cold all the time. Okay, well, mm -hmm. what are you eating? What are you drinking? I drink iced tea all day long. I drink ice water all day long. Well, what do you mean ice water? Oh, like the glass is filled with, you know, my container that I bring to work is filled with ice. And then I, you know, it's still cold at the end of the day. That's too much cold. You're telling me that you're freezing and you're drinking cold. And I'm like, okay, let's cut the ice in half to start. Cause sometimes people don't mm -hmm. want to give that up. Sure. But yeah, if you're cold, that's not going to help you. And like I said, limit teas like mint or have the, have mint with things that, you know, are more warming so that it, you know, kind of counteracts the cooling nature of the herb. Right. Um, you, you still get some of the benefits of mint, but without the cooling nature of it when you mix it with warming. Mm -hmm. And what I'll do with those patients is typically you can find something that is a symptom of that coldness, right? Right. So you'll say, you see, you know, why you, you know, your, your belly feels cold and you're having some trouble digesting is you really need to add more warming foods into your diet. Right. You're, 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 you know, you're kind of starving the fire inside that's going to cook your food for you. Right. Or putting it out. You're putting it out. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> we were talking about earlier when we were chatting, um, and I thought it was funny that we both do the same thing, not that you get to go out anymore to eat, but when you <laughs> go and they go to bring you the ice water, that we were both saying that we're like, oh, no, no ice in, in any drink that I get when I'm out. I'm like, no ice. If I order tea, it's like tea with no ice. And they look at you like, yeah, I don't need all that cold. I feel like I'm generally cold more than I need to be. I would rather just not have the ice. Yep. Um, I agree more. Yeah. And then like, we, I, like I said before, cold salads, try and have more of the veggies cooked. Not that you can never have a salad because sometimes you just want one, but trying not to have, you know, a salad with lunch and a salad with dinner. Have those veggies cooked, like have some broccoli instead, some steamed broccoli or um, sauteed broccoli. Um, just not not so many uncooked veggies. And I will say, and we talked about this a little, The um, you and I talked about this, Rob, that there are some cases where people can tolerate a little more cold. Patients who are going through menopause, they may need to keep some of those cooling foods in because they're overheating. Very good point. Um, and kids tend not to be impacted the same way because they're more young. They're like little, um, little mini fires running around and they're okay with those cooler things. But as we get older, that young fire starts to dwindle and the cold, I feel like puts that fire out even quicker. Mm -hmm. So, so show, the, the weak, deficient, elderly are going to really notice um, a negative impact from these cold foods. Right. And that's why we want them to have soups and teas and like um, covering their feet and we're having a blanket right. handy. And you know, I'm going to go back to your point about having a coat that goes down past your belt line. 
Yes. So important. I tell all my patients about that. Having a, uh, a hoodie on a, a jacket is a great thing because it makes a continuous connection of, of uh, warmth. There's no draft that's getting in. And the same thing goes for the low back. And that's where we will see people with low back problems, low back pain, weakness, yeah. the kidneys, you know, and en energetic weakness, you know, in the body is they're, they're leaking. You know, the, the cold is just sucking out their energy. Yes. You know, I've, I treated a bunch of guys who worked in factories standing on cold concrete that's, you know, right on top of the ground. So their energy is just being sapped out and they can feel it all day long. They're getting yeah. more and more tired as the day goes on and the heat just saps them right out. Yeah. It's a really a shame that this, this country doesn't use a lot of radiant heat on, right. the, on the floors. I worked on a, a patio. It was like the foyer of a house and it had um, radiant heat and it was in February and it was about six degrees out. And we were standing there for the better part of the day, like four or six hours or so, and did not feel cold because the floor wow. was at 68 degrees, even though the air was at six degrees. And I felt fine. I didn't feel yeah. tired, depleted. My feet didn't feel cold. I wasn't achy. And it was, it, it's incredible what yeah. you can do. For so important that the feet stay warm. So, yeah. so important. Um, I'm just going to go back to the comments because they relate to what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, Hillary commented that Epic is a great bone broth brand for when you have no time to make your own. Which, like I said, you know, it's great if you can. If not, though, now there are at least options that, that we can have. Um, and then Daryl said that the hegema, uh, the black sesame seeds are so good for nourishing the kidneys, which the winter and this season are related to the kidneys and water. Um, and she also said that ginger mint or fennel mint teas are quite lovely. And again, it's that balance of something cooling with something warming so that it's refreshing but warming at the same time. So I just thought I would bring those in because they're relative, relevant to what we were just talking about. Yeah, that's a perfect balance, right? The heat of the ginger, and right. have that flavoring of the mint. It's yeah. Cool. So supplements that we like to recommend, I, and not just this time of year, but I do like patients to take a good multivitamin. Um, and I tend not to rely too heavily on the vitamins that people can get from the, from like a grocery store. A lot of times they have a lot of added fillers that it's just too much. It's, it's not, is it more vitamin or is it more all these added fillers to make it, it what it is? Yeah, I use a port excuse me, pure encapsulations a lot. And they have a multivitamin that I've gotten for my patients and they'll take half of the dosage that pure encapsulations recommends because it's just so strong, you know? Right. And so they get a cost savings there too. You know, it's good stuff, but it lasts twice as long because you don't need as much, you know? Right. And the other thing I wanted to say about that, you were talking about fillers and the binding agents and the, the, even the capsules, will show up in my allergy treatments as ah, yeah, interesting. People say, well, I, I took the vitamin, but I got an upset stomach, so I stopped taking the vitamin. So, okay, let's take a look at that. We treat them and then they don't have a problem with the, taking the vitamin. So they're, now they're getting the benefits of that. Very yeah. good. Yeah. So I also tell people, um, and the, the, I feel like I'm seeing more and more, especially in the last, like, three years or so, people are more vitamin D deficient. And D is another one that's recommended in terms of trying to stay healthy um, in the time of COVID. I find patients come in and their vitamin D is at like a 29. And they'll say, oh, my physician didn't say anything. And, I, and the normal range for vitamin D is 30 to 100. So that's a very big range. I feel like when people come in and they're closer to 30, that's not where I want to see them at. So I usually have them take like a thousand IUs of D3 on a daily basis and then retest to see where they are. I mean, if, if it's someone who I think that they're just their constitution needs it, I might have them do a, even more than that initially, but it's a really good one to take um, just to stay 
healthy through the winter. Um, and then there's formulas. And again, when, when Dr. Rob and I talk about formulas, don't just go to Amazon and, and buy these. Go see someone who is licensed in acupuncture and herbs so that you know that you're getting good quality products and it's and it's something that you'll be safe with or something that fits your constitution. There right. are some general ones that once I see patients, I, I can comfortably recommend, but I I wouldn't recommend them to someone who I hadn't seen. Um, There's a huge variation in the quality. Yeah. Even I mean, in the ones that we purchase. You know, we'll, yes. we'll talk with other acupuncturists on Facebook and find that, you know, there's, there's some herbal companies that really just aren't bringing in quality herbs in their right. And, right. It, and it changes over time too, you know? Right. So I, so one of the ones that I generally, once I'm treating a patient, will have them keep in their medicine cabinet is a formula called gone meddling. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of herbs that are considered to be antiviral. So let's say a patient calls me up and they say, I have a little bit of a scratchy throat, you know, like let's take this week, for example, where I can't get them into my clinic. I'll tell them to take that gone meddling. And it usually, they'll still get a cold, but it usually resolves fairly quick. And they'll tell me that, you know, oh, normally I have a cold and it lasts two weeks, but I took that and it didn't last as long. Um, and then, you know, like, once they come in, I can design a custom formula for them because we break everything down. Like this is what we were talking about for several weeks, how everything is based on the person who's in front of you. So while that's a good overall formula, once they get in, I want to get them on something more specific that's made for, for them. Um, oh, so I just want to, da uh, Daryl commented, oh no, sorry, Lenore commented the best, best vitamin D supplement and should it be with K2? I use um, Nordic Naturals vitamin D. Um, I don't know whether it has K in it. This one does not. But I will tell the story of um, just on the note of vitamin K, not everybody should be on K. So people, there are certain clotting issues that people shouldn't be on vitamin K. So it would depend on the person whether I would recommend that they be on, on K. Um, I actually have a good friend who's had multiple uh, heart procedures and he can't take vitamin K at all. Like he just, he cannot, it's a big no-no. So I would never um, tell somebody without knowing their cardiac history whether or not they should be taking that. Um, I like elderberry gummies or elderberry syrup. Um, it's got vitamin C in it. The one that I take has C, zinc, um, all those ones that you should, you know, help to prevent cold and flu season. <laughs> it's a good time of the year for that. Yep. Um, and again, just to have my patients keep them in their medicine cabinet. Um, I love, I love loquat syrup. Um, as you can hear, I have a more raspy sound to my voice. So I take that before we do the podcast <laughs> so that I'm not as raspy. Um, my daughter is a singer, so she uses it before she performs. And I have a couple people that I work on that are singers. So I'll have them keep that as well. And it's just a good one. If you're having a sore throat, it just, it feels so good going down and your throat just feels wonderful after you take it. Um, <laughs> I do Gypsy Cold Care. Uh, it has elderflower, yarrow, uh, peppermint leaf, rose hip, cinnamon bark, ginger, clove. Um, and it just, now my daughter has since said it, she thinks it tastes disgusting, but it, when your throat is starting to get that, I think I'm going to get a cold. It's just another good tea to have in your tea cabinet where you can take that out and just have that with your gone meddling. And I swear it kicks things out so much quicker. Um, and then um, we were, so the other thing we were talking about with the holidays, things that you want to keep on hand, there's a formula that I give to my patients called Baohawan. And I call this formula the, I can't believe I ate the whole thing formula. So this is, you've just had that big family dinner and you just kept piling it on because it's all those foods that you maybe only have for the holidays. And um, 
it's called harmony pill. It just, it disperses that. However, this is not a formula for anyone who has a uh, gluten or wheat issue because it does have barley in it. Um, but it's, it's for that feeling of everything just sitting in your stomach for too long that and probiotics. But Rob, you said you also have another product that acts similarly that you recommend for your patients. Exactly. Yeah. It's called microguard and it comes out of bio, botanical biohacking. Um, it's available in my office. I actually have a bunch of it. I can get you if you're interested. Uh, and what's interesting, you're talking about the, the gluten part of it is because it, all the herbs are sourced in China, there's, there's such a low incidence of GMO that, right. that we're not getting any reaction after, I think, three years now of um, you know, gluten sensitivities for it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll have to try that because I I know that I've had other people take it and keep it on hand for that, but I don't take it myself. Mm -hmm. um, I also recommend vitamin C. Um, there's different theories with the vitamin C. I say at least 400 milligrams per day. Um, some people take more than that. Some people take it mm -hmm. up to the point that they get gastric distress from it because it can soften stools a little bit. Um, you could keep emergency packets on you and just take that. I, I used to take that when we would travel because um, Andrew's kids are in Tennessee. So whenever we would have to travel and you're in and out of you know, rest stops and all this other stuff and the traveling is wearing on you, we would take that and just have that in between things. Even Airborne, I heard I heard and read in different places that Airborne is based on Yin Chao San, is it Yin Chao? I think it's based on Yin Chao San, that whoever made it based it on that formula. So even keeping that is really good. Um, Yin Chao San itself. I wanna go back to vitamin C for a second. I have a question. Sure. What what um, dosage pill do you take for vitamin C? I do the four hundred milligrams. Okay. I do low because I okay. I am very sensitive digestive. Right, okay. That makes sense then because I I've seen more numbers in the thousand milligram. Yeah. Start, you know, and I'll tell people who are sick. I'll say take a thousand, and then once you go to the bathroom, take another thousand. Okay. And because it's water soluble, it's not staying right. After a few hours, take another one, and again to tolerance, right? Yeah, to tolerance. But, I start with um, four hundred because I don't know. Yeah, you know, yeah. not knowing what someone's tolerance is. That's good. That's all you need. <laughs> Some people need a lot more than that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I wanted to go over to the questions. Uh, there was some questions here. I think we might have. I can't see them. It was about vitamin D. Or did you do that one? I did that one. And we did. Ask, uh, oh, wait, no. Do you recommend taking your D with specific foods? I, so um, that was Hillary's comment. So I'm, uh, even as a practitioner myself, really bad with taking supplements. Like sometimes I don't eat with right away first thing in the morning. So I just take all of my morning supplements when I have my morning coffee even if it's recommended that they're taken with food and it's still fine to do that. Um, and then I'm really bad in the evening. I have to like try and remember, remember to take my nighttime supplements. Um, liposomal C better than regular C. I don't think I've compared. Have you compared liposomal to, to regular vitamin C? No, I was hoping you would answer that question. No, I, but I can look into it. And our next podcast is going to be a Q&A podcast. And so I can look into comparing, you know, whether some people prefer one over the other. Mm -hmm. um, fire cider. I don't know. So Daryl will have to share what fire cider is. I have never heard of fire cider. And I like Hillary's comment, does anyone remember their vitamins at night? No, I, I really am bad at it. It's so terrible. I keep saying I'm going to get on track and make sure I take. And it, for me, it's more that I should be taking the herbal supplements that I need to at night. And I'm really, really bad. I'm, I'm the bad practitioner. <laughs> bad, bad. Bad, bad, bad. So, sorry. I have to get better at that. Um, you were saying that you recommend Shaoya San, right? Yes, that's 
you know, it's either that or the uh, gun mulling, depending on the presentation of the coal. Is it, were you, were you saying Shia son or Yin Sha son? Yin Sha, I'm sorry. Yin Sha. Okay. You have that one first. Yeah. Because we were talking about Sha Yao and I, at some right. point and I, and I was like, I never think to recommend that though, but with family drama, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> San, for, for those who are listening that are not practitioners, which we hope there's a lot of non-practitioners is called the free and easy wanderer is the translation of it. And it's, it's a great formula for stress. And I mean, I do, I put a lot of GYN patients on it, but I hadn't thought about telling people to have it for the holidays Yeah, as a good one. Yeah. I have it as a tea also, which is nice. And there's a little mint in it. So it's, um, you know, it's not as medicinal tasting, right? So people like that a lot. That's a great one. And then the microguard we were talking about before, you were saying, I can't believe I ate the whole thing. I always say, if you're eating the standard American diet, you know, this this should go with your hamburger. Or this should go with your your two IPAs. You know, if you're, uh, you know, just coming off of your rock climbing and, and you're going to lay down uh, six or eight IPAs with your buddies, you need to take this stuff. <laughs> so another standard um, is just, if you have fresh ginger, cutting it up, boiling it in water. You said you add scallions. I yeah. don't normally do that. I was just normally like, oh, let me cut up some ginger. So let's say you've gotten, you were outside, you feel really cold, you think you might come down with something, you cut up the ginger, you boil it, and then drink it as hot as you can tolerate. Like, I don't want anybody giving themselves burns in their mouth, but drink it as warm as you can and then get under the blankets and try and sweat out whatever you've caught. And, mm -hmm. and it works really, really good. Yeah. Even bundle up, right? Yeah. Put your pajamas on and your, and your robe and get under the blankets. Yes. Get really, really like layered up right. and, sweat, and out. sweat that out. And it really works. It's amazing. And and then I always tell patients, like, if it's lingering, they need to come in. They're, they need a specific formula. It's not a general formula. We need to figure out exactly what's gone awry and get them back on track. Um, some quick tips for the skin. I feel like I keep Emily's Skin Soothers, which is a product made by a colleague of ours. Um, in response to, I believe his daughter had um, some eczema that wasn't resolving. He put herbs in it. It is great for like dry, cracked skin. I have like little tiny travel size containers that I keep in my bag. I have one on my desk at the office. I have it at my house. I just like I try, especially in the winter, to keep that on my hands because they get so dry and cracked. Um, and it's just, it's got certain herbs in it that are great for the skin. Just a great, great product. Um, facial wise, I, I, you know, go back to the cleanse, tone and moisturize, keep an SPF and mm -hmm. serums. Winter is a great time that I tell my patients to do their peels because they're, unless they're traveling, if they're going, which not a lot of people are right now, but in the future when we can travel again, when they go to some tropical place, I don't want them peeling before they're going to be in, at the beach for two weeks. Sorry, I missed that. Could you um, say it again, please? Oh, I just stepped on my phone and she talked to me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Um, <laughs> getting regular facials, the glycolic peels, um, trying not to take overly hot showers because it, it dries out your skin. Oh, I'm guilty of it usually, but I try and be better because I'm really dry in the winter. My son was just in the shower before I left for like a half an hour. His feet came out and they were like red. I was like, dude, <laughs> I'm not sure I have hot water left. I may not have hot water left for like a month now he was in there so long. Um, try and keep it under 10 minutes. It, it just, if it's too hot and you're in there for too long, the natural oils from your skin just get removed. And the protective cells that protect us from disease too. Right. Yeah. It, that's, it's another barrier. Our skin is like the first form of defense. Exactly. Um, same thing with harsh soaps. Try and have soaps that have like shea butter in them that are a little bit more moisturizing. Um, and then another thing that uh, the emotional aspect of winter that I wanted to share with people, because there is that 
component in traditional Asian medicine. So in the fall, we talked about that the um, autumn season was associated with the lung and the large intestine. Winter is associated with the kidneys and bladder. And the kidneys are like our foundational fire of life. So you want to protect them at this time of year. There, the emotion associated with winter is fear. And I sort of like to think of it as like the fear of maybe transitioning and letting go of what was here and, you know, what's to come. Um, winter is the end of the year, whether you're looking at the Gregorian calendar or the lunar calendar. So, so those are two different dates for the new year. Dep and I, because I look for anything to celebrate, I celebrate both of them. <laughs> um, I feel like it's a good time to look at uh, what's gone on, like a time for looking inward um, and to see where we're going. Uh, and I feel like, you know, maybe we don't want to look back at 2020 per se, but normally you would want to look back on the year, um, be thankful for the things that we've had, look to start mapping out um, goals for the upcoming year. Um, the colors associated with the water element are black and blue. Um, and I always usually tell people not like a bruise, but I do kind of feel like most people probably feel a little bit bruised by 2020. <laughs> it's left us a little bit like raw. Um, and then I like, so the, the element itself for winter is water. And I always like to think of water as having all these different aspects to it. It can be fluid, it can be frozen, it can be gaseous. So it's so changing and that's what winter is. It's this time of change. And, and the, it, go ahead. the yeah. thing about water in winter is stillness, right? The water is frozen. Um, the water is uh, calm on a, on a lake, say. And that's what we're trying to be, really, is it's time for us to be still and rest and, you know, renew ourselves, right? We're going to start a new right. year, right? But to be ready for that is a big part of it. And that's kind of one of the things we see as acupuncturists is people who don't get ready because it's, it's just a constant relay race, right? You're just right. running from, you know, January to March and May and, you know, Labor Day, and then it's Thanksgiving, and then it's the holidays, and then you're doing it all over again. Right. You plan some vacations, and you got to do this. And you, you know, it's a never-ending cycle. Mm -hmm. And what what we like to promote uh, for people's health is to slow down, to rest, right? yes, to, to, to renew. Yep. Otherwise, you won't be ready for the spring. Mm -hmm. You need to like go inward, like plants do, so you can like mother nature you don't don't generally stop mother nature from doing what you're supposed to do we tend to stop and not follow mother nature um i wanted to share there's a uh there's all these classic texts and i always say things are so poetic in these texts or maybe it's just how the person is translating them but one of the texts that we use in school is the called the Huangdi Neijing, and it's the inner classic of the Yellow Emperor, the Yellow Emperor's inner classic. And it contains um, some of the oldest teachings about winter and its relationship to the kidneys. So this is from that. During the winter months, all things in nature wither, hide, return home, and enter a resting period, just as lakes and rivers freeze and snow falls. This is a time when yin dominates yang. Therefore, one should refrain from overusing the yang energy, retire early, and get up with the sunrise, which is later in winter. Desires and mental activity should be kept quiet and subdued as if keeping a happy secret. Stay warm, avoid the cold, and keep the skin covered. Avoid sweating. The theory of the winter season is one of the conversation and storage. Without such practice, the result will be injury to the kidney energy. This will cause weakness, shrinking of muscles, and coldness. Then the body loses all its ability to open and move about in the spring. 
So I just love that because I feel like that's what we should be striving for in the winter is this going inward and contemplating and, and planning for the spring when everything opens back up and, and, you know, flowers are blooming and trees are budding and all of that stuff. So this could be one of the best winters for that. Yes. With, uh, yes. Things being forcing us to do that. Shut down. Yep. Yep. Um, some of the, some of the things that I, you know, cause I do still feel like, okay, even though you have to turn inward, we still need to move. Chi needs to move. The energy of the body needs to move. So taking short walks outside, not necessarily being outside for an hour until your toes are frozen, but like five, 10 minute walks a couple of times a day, getting some fresh air in. Um, I myself like to journal. I like to journal all the time. I Those composition books that my kids are forced to get in specific colors that like I get back at the end of the year and they've written on one page and I'm like, what? I use those to journal with. So I have stacks of like composition notebooks. It's a great time that if you've never journaled, maybe try and start it. Um, meditation, breath work, uh, yoga, Tai Chi, stretching. Um, you do a lot more Tai Chi than I do. I consider you to be more, much more well-versed on that than I am. So um, maybe you could share with people like like one little tip that they could do. Okay. So yeah, it's, um, Tai Chi, well, Qigong really what I do. Um, slight difference. But um, as we keep talking about the kidneys, we're talking about the actual physical kidneys in the low back. So one of the things we'll do is you just tap your backs. So you're just massaging the kidney to give it a little more energy, a little more blood flow to the area. Uh, another one is to swing back and forth and, and, and have your arms um, slap your legs, slap your, your, your body. So you're actually massaging the front of your back, front of your body and the back of your body at the same time. You know, maybe we'll get uh, Fabrice on here to to talk about uh, Qigong for a session coming up. Because he, he's he got uh, videos online that you could purchase and, and then you have a subscription and you can work with them any time of day from a phone or any or anywhere really cool. and, and build your Qigong practice. Yeah, and he's got a lot of the Chinese theory behind it too also thrown in there. So you can understand Shen and Jing and you know all those other things you and I know about but our patients may not understand. Right. Um, Lenore asked, how do you get ready for, for water if you're a fire sign? It's more about getting ready for the winter itself. Um, it's um, not so much like the wood fire, earth, metal, and water. I'm sure there is some overlap astrologically, but it's more about um, accepting the, the winter and, and preparing for it. You, you know, you don't want to exhaust the water. I don't know a huge amount about in terms of astrology, um, but it's more about being ready, not letting yourself get too cold. Um, I'd have to look into if there are specifics on whether, you know, if you're a fire element, and whether there are other things that you could add to the routine, which I can, you know, I'm not going to research it now while we're chatting, but I can research it and mm -hmm. come back to it for our Q&A uh, in two weeks when we do that one. And maybe I can have some better answers for you because I don't want to lead you the wrong way since the astrological aspect is not my, my strong suit. Um, yeah, so... Um, we probably, we wanted to just touch on seasonal affective disorder briefly, um, but I think we're going to have to go into that in more detail in another episode. Yeah, I think some of that would be good for the next time we meet and we do Q&A. We can talk a little more about the relationship between water and fire, kidney and heart in um, Chinese medical. <clears throat> right. right. That's fun. I like that stuff. Very illuminating. Yeah. So, Rob, you were saying about the the effect of seasonal affective disorder with um, 
as, having as, windows uh, in your room and as it gets darker right longer and longer i was funny i was looking at the, a chart this morning to see uh because next tuesday is uh, next monday is the uh, solstice right you know we'll <laughs> take heart the days are going to get longer in one week you know right maybe one minute at a time every day but, one but of still the, longer but one of the things i noticed was it's it doesn't get lighter until later in the morning even though the days are getting longer so right now the days are getting longer, but they're getting the light is coming up later every day. Right, not in the morning. Even after the solstice, so it's right now it, the the sun comes up around seven thirty, I think, something like that, and it's going to continue coming up later and later. But my back to the point is, um, you know, people are really affected by that. I, I have a number of patients who are really struggle with seasonal affective disorder. So what I suggest to them is to try and get as much daylight as possible. And sometimes that's very difficult, right? If you work in an off office building, the only light you're getting is fluorescent light, which is not what you want. Um, actually, LED light is is better. Um, and I have um, a what's called a Saluma, and it, you can put it on your Drop face. The and Saluma. Exposure Love it. To LED light, which th will help with this situation. Uh, and also, again, of course, be outside. If you can dress appropriately, get outside, enjoy the light that we do have. Um, those those are the things that I recommend for people. And of course, there are supplements they can take, but I try to get them more thinking about it, you know, in terms of action, so that they're moving their body, they're thinking more, you know, to, more active to, to, overall. Right, rather than just say, "Well, I'll go home and I'll turn on all the lights and I'll take my Sam E." Yeah. Right. <clears throat> I, I didn't get a lot of success with that sort of stuff. I get better success with, you know, stepping back one uh, section here to qigong, stretching, breath work, meditation. Right. Right. You know, is being more mindful of the fact that here we are. It's getting darker, longer, but it's not going to end. Yeah, you know, it's not going to stay. Right. It's going to end. It's you know, we're going to yeah transition back around. We're going to celebrate the incoming light in yeah. a week. Yeah. So. Bring the light back. Light a candle. That's the other thing we always do is light a candle to celebrate the light coming back. Uh, uh, one of the things that we did want to talk about um, is is masking. How important it is right now to have masks on. And I have to say, when I was at PCOM, there were a lot of students who were not born in the U.S. who would wear masks as, you know, because it was the season of people getting sick. And in retrospect, I'm not sure why I didn't adopt the idea of wearing masks sooner. And how, you know, this whole COVID thing has made me realize that I think next year when it's flu season, if COVID has died down, I may still wear a mask as a preventative. And you were saying that in your travel, see, I haven't traveled as extensively as you have. Yeah, I've been to China a few times. I've been to Thailand, the Philippines, um, stayed in Hong Kong, um, Nepal. I was in Nepal for three months, and in especially in Kathmandu, where the air quality is horrible, you know, many many people would wear masks. Right. Um, in Beijing, the same thing. The air quality is not so great, but you'd have a beautiful sunny day with a clear sky, and one person would be walking down the avenue with a mask on. And you would ask, well, what, what is that about? Because we're not, we're so not used to that. Right. Say, well, m you know, maybe, maybe she's sick or maybe she's afraid of getting sick, you know, so people will wear them much more freely there. Right. And I know they wear them in Japan. My, my nephew is there stationed there in the Navy right now for, is in his third year. And all the time he says, people are always wearing masks there, especially on the subway. Right in those tight quarters, in the, in the colder weather, when people are crowded into smaller spaces that are enclosed, um, they're all wearing masks. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's so important right now. And like I said, I'm starting to rethink it, you know, for other times, once this dies down that I just feel like for patient contact, I think I, you know, we're around so many more people, how much safer that that would make everyone. So we just wanted to briefly chat about that. Um, so I think we hit most of the comments um, and any that we couldn't 
answer clearly, we're going to try and do because actually our next podcast on the 28th is going to be a Q&A podcast. Um, I, I have some questions that people have submitted already. We have some questions from podcasts that, you know, came up since we aired those podcasts. We're still looking for you guys to ask questions that you may have, of, you know, for either of us to answer. You don't have to submit them where both of us answer. You can ask Dr. Rob specific questions. You could ask me specific questions. Um, questions about future topics that you'd like us to chat about more in, you know, in depth. And we're starting to put together our lineup for 2021. So guest speakers and um, all kinds of new exciting things that we're planning. Very cool. Very exciting. Yes. So do you have any other final thoughts, Dr. Rob? Just uh, for those who are listening or those who are going to pick this up in the next couple of days or in the next two weeks, uh, you know, come with questions, email us questions, post questions. Let us, let us know what you think and what, what interests you. Yeah. The purpose of the um, podcast is for us to help educate the public on ways to take care of yourself, not just with acupuncture, but with Qigong and supplements and uh, proper lifestyle, diet, nutrition, uh, you name it. Um, if, if we don't have a background in it, we're going to find somebody who does, you know, yeah. we, we know acupuncturists across the country and really around the world who specialize in, you know, some pretty intricate levels of um, care for people. So um, we can bring them on. I'd love to bring them on, you know, and, and have them share their expertise with all of us. Right. Yeah. There's so many, I mean, there's so many things in my mind that I want us to cover, but it's not, and so many things that you've talked about that, you know, we should cover, but there's also what do other people want us to cover? And we want to make sure that we cover as many things as we can. Um, and it helps us to plan ahead of time, like if we need to bring someone in to answer specific questions. Like there are a lot of topics that I'm not an expert on and I want to bring those experts in. So, yeah. Yeah. so we're grateful for all of our listeners. Thank you for tuning in and we will see you in two weeks, December 28th. Oh, after the holidays. So everybody, if you celebrate, um, have a most excellent holiday and don't forget to like our Facebook page, uh, follow us on Instagram. We're going to be uploading stuff to other places and we'll post that on our social media platform. So you have it, make sure you head over to Dr. Rob's pages, my pages. We just want to bombard you with health and wellness from all different angles. <laughs> right. And remember to shop small. Yes, right. yes, we shop need to small. Take care of each other here. So take care. Be well. The contents presented during the Practical Medicine Podcast include information about various modalities that exist to achieve health and wellness and are for informational purposes only. You acknowledge and agree that the following disclaimers and warnings shall apply to all content presented. The podcast contains the opinions of Dr. Robert Balco, D-A-C-L-A-C, -A -A and Dr. Stephanie Lipnicki, D-A-C-M-L-A-C, -A -A and the guests of their show. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you have regarding any medical condition. The views expressed in the Practical Medicine Podcast are our own and do not represent those of all licensed acupuncture professionals. Always seek the help of your own acupuncturist or medical provider to determine your best course of action. You may want to use the information presented as a supplement to better understand your diagnosis or treatment, but it should not be the sole thing that you use to make important medical decisions. Do not use the content of the podcast in lieu of medical advice. Never disregard professional medical advice 
or delay seeking care because of something you have heard on this podcast. Privacy is important to us. Thus, all people, places, and scenarios have been changed where applicable to protect privacy and maintain confidentiality.